Welcome to our Summer Space Edition of JFK 35. Today, I will speak to a group of female scientists who are doing fascinating research to give us further insight into our understanding of the universe beyond planet Earth. I'll talk to them about their work and how they got involved in this field on this episode of JFK 35. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Welcome to this special bonus summer episode of JFK 35, a podcast by the John F. Kennedy Library Foundation. I'm Jamie Richardson. In celebration of the 50th anniversary of the moon landing and President Kennedy's vision that launched the effort, the JFK Library recently held a space summit where an extraordinary group of scientific and business pioneers gathered to discuss the legacy of JFK's moonshot and what lies ahead for the future of space exploration. In these bonus episodes, we'll share with you interviews with some of the day's speakers. This episode, I interviewed three outstanding female scientists, Lori Leshen, president of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, Sarah Seeger, MIT professor of planetary science and physics, and Maria Zuber, MIT vice president of research. We talked about how they ended up in their fields, what they're working on, and one fun thing they all have in common. Here's that interview now. I think uh, there's some great mystique that space holds for everybody and so it's really exciting to be here with you all. What made you get decide to get involved in your field? What interested you? When I was a child I always loved the sky, the moon, the stars. And when I was a teenager I luckily found out that you could be one could be an astronomer for a job. So I was really lucky to be find something that I loved doing that I was also good at in school. Yeah, for me, why I decided to focus on the solar system is that there were so many places that hadn't been explored that we could send spacecraft to. And uh, if the spacecraft got to it and learned things for the first time, then um, it was possible to make big discoveries. And I was first inspired about space. I'm a little bit too young to remember the Apollo missions that we're celebrating so much right now, but I do remember the first pictures from the surface of Mars taken by the Viking landers in the mid-70s, and I just wanted to reach out and touch those rocks, and that's turned out to be my scientific area as I study for rocks from Mars and, and meteorites, and it's great to, that that early inspiration has turned out to be my life's work. That's so incredible. Um, what are some of the projects you're working on that you're most excited about right now? I'll describe one that's easy to explain, and that is <laughs> at MIT, we built the payload for and we're running a space mission called TESS. It's a NASA mission. TESS is Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. And this um, satellite is in a very elliptical orbit around Earth, and it's staring at the sky, giant strips of the sky, looking for tiny drops in brightness when a planet just happens to go in front of the star. And we're finding on the order of 100 exoplanet candidates, new possibly new planets per week. Wow, that's incredible. That is very exciting. So uh, I'm analyzing um, data, uh, gravity data from the moon and uh, studying the uh, the moon's interior structure. I'm also uh, a member of the science team on a mission that is going to go and orbit around um, the metallic core of a broken up planetary protoplanet. And I'm also in the process of uh, developing a DNA sequencing like device to look for life uh, in space, either, you know, um, on Mars, Europa, or somewhere else in the solar system. I'm a member of the Mars Curiosity rover team, which we're currently roving around Mars each and every day, trying to understand the possibility of of life in a very interesting location uh, on the planet Mars, where water once existed billions of years ago, and uh, and it's it's a fascinating thing. Although I will say I, I'm a college president now, so although I have worked a few days on the Mars rover as a college president, just to prove I could both be a college president and drive a rover on Mars at the same time, uh, so I have done that. But my day to day work is more with the explorers of tomorrow, really trying to make sure that the next generation of leaders in science engineering and technology are really well prepared to go out and answer the big unknown questions that face us in science and engineering. And that's a thrill to get to do every single day. It's as thrilling as exploring space, believe it or not. Well, that's incredible. So I feel really special or lucky to be here seated at a table with three women. I feel like lots of uh, the scientific fields are really underrepresented in terms of having women or people who are just in general underrepresented. So how have you seen, you've been in your careers for a while now, how long have you seen or how have you seen 
the kind of demographics shifting and having more women or encouraging more women to be involved in these fields? Well, exoplanets is a bit of an unusual story because it is a, quite a young field. It's only about 20 years old. And when exoplanets first started, I started along with it. And we'd go to conferences and there was nobody under the age of 40. So there w wasn't really like this old guard of f rooms full of white men with white hair. And so that's why I like to think in exoplanets at the moment anyway, we have a good number of women. And now as everyone's getting older and the field's maturing, it's unfortunately we're not having as many women rise to the top to be leaders in the field. But on the whole, exoplanets is off to a good start. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a geophysicist. When I started, uh, there were uh, basically no women in my field, really, except for me. And, and actually, uh, there still aren't that many. I mean, there's starting to be more, but the list of women who study planetary gravity, I think, is, is, uh, is extremely small. So, uh, but we've, we've been working to bring in um, women who, who study in very complementary fields to, to try to get those in, uh, in remote sensing and, uh, and geological sciences and, and also in, um, in aerospace engineering, we're finding more. So, um, so we're uh, diversifying, but not as quickly as has happened in exoplanets. I want to add something about sure. Maria Zuber that she hired me at MIT some time ago. And during her time as department head in the Earth, Atmosphere, and Planetary Sciences Department, I think, I want to say she hired some like eight women out of a faculty of 40. And it wasn't like, oh, we're bending over backwards for women. No, it's the women gravitated towards her department. And the standard was high, but she helped actually change the culture. So one person can make a difference there. Yeah, I think uh, leadership matters. And, and uh, from the top and then from the bottom up, too, it really makes a difference. At WPI, we've been working on gender diversity in our incoming class. And when I got there five years ago, it was 32% women, and now we've had three classes in a row with over 40 by putting the energy and effort and focus on it. And it really, you, we can move the needle. It takes um, effort, it takes really shining a light on it, it takes some money and resources to really be thinking hard about are we putting our money where our mouth is when it comes to really diversifying these fields. And now I'm worried about, you know, as women graduate from institutions like MIT and WPI and they go out into the workplace, how do we make sure that they're as successful there as they can be within our institutions? And so doing a lot of work with local industry on how to make sure that they are, um, that women can find pathways to success in all kinds of organizations. Do you have any advice or recommendations for uh, a young woman or anyone else getting into the field uh, at this stage? Find something you love doing that you're also good at, and that's a ticket to success. But also find mentors, peer mentors, find people at all stages above you, below you, and build your own support network. Yeah, so I, w I would agree with that. Um, I, I think there's a tendency uh, for for actually both men and women, but I, but I think more so for women to look around and um, and and think that everybody else has a more carefree life than they do. Um, so there are, there are definitely um, challenges that are associated with progressing in any career. But uh, you know, science and technology is just a fantastic career for a woman. I mean, you to some extent anyway have the ability to set your own hours. Uh, you work on something that you really enjoy and are passionate about. And, um, and you get to travel to interesting places and work on interesting things that are largely things that, that you've decided upon for yourself. So, um, so you know, taking all things in balance, um, you know, it's some effort, but it's really worth it. And I guess I would say don't, don't assume that an experience that you have in a very traditional classroom environment is reflective of what the work of STEM is all about. Um, get yourself a, a real world experience, get that internship, get that opportunity to go out and apply what you've learned in a real world context. Because when you do that, we know, we, we do this at WPI all the time, our, our students are doing projects all over the world and we have data that shows that when they get out there and apply that work in the world, it impacts them for their whole lives and their whole careers. It gives them confidence to know that they can actually make the difference in the world that they want to make. There's no better path to making a big difference than through science and engineering. And one thing before we wrap up, I think I heard in the panel that all three of you have asteroids named after you. Is that is that true? None of them are going to hit Earth. This is the <laughs> okay, important well, that's thing first that you have to know. Answer. Mine is a Mars crosser, though. Oh, and, that's and cool. Actually, actually it, was, it was named by um, Eugene and Carolyn Shoemaker, and they picked an asteroid that might 
hit Mars someday nice. for me. So. so for anyone who's eventually going to end up living on Mars, it could be Maria Zuber. That brings you That's to right. an there end. Could, there. <laughs> <laughs> but there could be a Maria Zuber crater then. Yeah, there you go. Very nice. So how did that happen? How do you get this honor bestowed on you that you get an asteroid named for you? You know, I got this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so asteroids, asteroids are one of the few things that can be named for, for living people. And there's, a, there's quite a bit of f- flexibility in, in how they're named. And there's a person who discovers a heck of a lot of them. Uh, and so he occasionally gives some for naming over to various professional organizations, which is often, which is how mine was named through the Meteorological Society when I won an award from them. So it was a part of that, that sort of honor, which is great. That's so cool. Do you know where they are? Or are they you can look it up find it it's mo- on the internet okay, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> like of all good things yeah. <laughs> there's the, the orbits are all that you can get the orbital elements and plot mm-hmm. where it is and that's then so go cool. out and find it yep absolutely you can that's awesome well thank you all so much for st- spending time to talk to me about your uh your work and your lives this is so incredible um and best of luck to all of your research research projects and your asteroids and hope they stay safe thank, thank you so much thank you so much Thank you for listening to our interview with Laurie Leshen, Sarah Seeger, and Maria Zuber. If you have questions or story ideas, email us at jfk35pod at jfklfoundation.org or tweet at us at jfklibrary using the hashtag jfk35. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And if you liked what you heard today, please consider subscribing to our podcast or leaving us a review. Thanks for listening, 